Hey guys, and welcome to Nicker. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this cute little amigurumi avocado. Believe it or not, I have had to say that 12 times because amigurumi avocado does not come off the tongue as easily as you think it might, and I'm bouncing everything. All right, so I also apparently, I didn't even notice this, but this ball is just an amalgamation of everything Kelly Green Vanish Choice, so I think those are two different colorways. So if that's driving people crazy, don't worry, I've acknowledged it, you're not crazy. <laughs> okay, so for this tutorial, you're going to need some worsted weight yarn. I am using all Vanish Choice, but I understand that that is going out of stock, basically. So um, I'm just going to be using some worsted weight size 4. I would recommend using all the same brand, or at least ones that you know work well together. I'm using Kelly Green chocolate and honey from Vanna's Choice if you happen to already have a giant stockpile of Vanna's Choice, which I do, which is why we're using Vanna's Choice because there's yarn shortages everywhere and I'm using what I have, which is why little tiny projects like this are coming out of the Nickrit studio, basically. I'm going to be using some stuffing, which you can just get a pound bag of it somewhere and it'll make a bunch of these. I used some 12 millimeter, I want to say 12, I'd say between 12 and 15 millimeter eyes. They're safety eyes, so they have the little backings on them. I'll show you how I attach them once we make our third little avocado here. I'm using some stuffing and I'm using a size D3 or 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. This is my Furls crochet hook. I love it. I am an affiliate with Furls Crochet, so I may be a little bit biased, but I only became an affiliate after I ordered their quarantine kit and fell in love with their crochet hook from that. So if that carries any weight with anybody, I'm also using some puffy paint for the smile. I just painted it on, but you could easily use some black thread or yarn or anything else like that. I know my smiles are crooked. I think it makes them adorable and I think it makes it look cute. All right, let's get started. Okay, so there will be a printable PDF for this pattern down below linked through Ravelry and Lovecrafts. This will be free for the first week that it is up on Ravelry. There will be a coupon code down below. So go ahead and click that and subscribe. If you're not subscribed already, you'll be in the know whenever I post videos and you'll be the no in the know whenever I have free tutorials and free PDFs and stuff up there. So enough plugging me. To do this, you're going to be making this in two separate pieces and you're going to be seaming them up the sides. I'm using a mattress stitch to side that up and I'll show you how I do that. But originally, I make the little avocado front where you see the avocado green, essentially, and the seed. You're going to want to start with the honey yarn. For row one, we are going to take the honey yarn and we're going to do something called working in the round. This is an intermediate pattern. If you're not comfortable with working in the round, this may not be the tutorial for you. I have a lot more beginner tutorials linked down below. I'm going to create a slip knot. If you don't know how to do that, I would definitely recommend going to the beginner video. I'm going to put it on my crochet hook and I'm going to create my magic ring. Again, a tutorial for all of these basic uh, terms will be down below. It's a playlist. So go ahead and click that if you don't know how to do that. But essentially I take my magic ring, well I, I take my slip knot, place it onto my hook, and then I chain two, and then I start working into the very first chain that I made. I skip my second chain, and I go into the first one. And what I'm going to do with that magic ring is I'm going to put six single crochet on the inside of it. So one, trying not to split my yarn. Really, really hard to do with older yarn. I've noticed going through all my vanish choice. Two, inside that little ring is that it all splits so easily. Not as much when I'm using my Furls crochet hook as I, when I use my Susan Bates because those are sharper and this is a bit more soft, but still it's just a big old pain in the butt. This is one, two, three, four, five, and six. One thing you'll notice, I'm gonna go back and redo that six stitch just to show you. One thing you'll notice that I'm dyslexic so I say things and I do things a lot in reverse. So if I'm dyslexic and you're dyslexic, this might go well for you. <laughs> but if you're not, I understand if you're a little confused. I also learned to crochet the wrong way. Most people wrap from right to left. I wrap from left to right. And then I just kind of pull from left to right instead. That again is part of my dyslexia. I think it looks just fine. So that's kind of why I just kind of stick with it. And I never corrected myself even when I learned that I was technically not doing it right. I don't know what I'm doing with all the air quotes today. I'm just feeling air quotes. I'm feeling sassy. 
All right. So another thing that I do with my amigurumi that a lot of other people do not do is I work through the front loop only. So whenever you've got a stitch, you have these two loops. It's a little V-shape. I'm going to go through the very front one, the one closest to my hook on top, and I'm going to do increases for every single one of these six stitches. So this is the first stitch. I'm going to go inside that same stitch twice, hopefully not split my yarn like so. And I'm going to put two stitches inside every single stitch. So I'm going to be going from six stitches on row two down up to 12. There we go. So this is the second stitch. One. I split it. There we go. I don't know what's going on with all the splitting. And then I'm going to put another s stitch inside that same one. So I'm putting two inside every single one. So we're going to be going from 6 again to 12. One, two. I think I've got two more stitches that I need to increase. One, two. How many am I at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One and two. I am now at the end of row two. I'm going to tug on my tail a little bit just to make sure that that is all nice and tight. All right, so now that we're on round three, we're going to increase another six stitches. And the way that we do that is we're going to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, increase. All the way around, we're going to be going on round three from 12 stitches up to 18. So one, we're just going to put that one stitch in there. And then the next stitch we're going to place two, one and same stitch, two. Next stitch, one, second stitch, increase, one and two. One and increase, one and increase. Pull that a little bit more. There we go. One. I think we're getting close to the end. And increase. I think I have one more increase and then I will be doing row four. Yes. One. And increase. There we go. Just to double check, I'm going to count my stitches. I count all the top little loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, now I'm at the end of row three. I'm going to take my tail and I'm gonna pull it through and I'm going to take that and pull it through that little stitch right there. I'm using that as a stitch marker so I can keep track of what I'm doing. Now for rows four and five, we are going to just single crochet around consistently keeping 18 stitches for both row and five. We're not doing any increasing. We're just placing one stitch inside every stitch for row four and for row five. Just going around and around and around until we get to the very last stitch of row five. And then I'll show you how I change colors so that it's not nearly as apparent as it would be otherwise. All right, so we're getting close to the end of row five. I believe I have two more stitches after this one, two. And now we are on our last stitch of row five. I'm going to put my hook in. I'm gonna wrap like normal. I'm gonna have my two loops right there, but then I'm gonna kind of set that aside and get my Kelly green or whatever green you're using. I'm gonna move that out of my active bowl right there. We're gonna try to get this actually untangled. There we go. I'm gonna take a about two inches and kind of just push it to the back of my work. I'm then going to start taking my yarn and working with it. I'm going to grab it with my hook and pull it through those last two stitches like so. Then I'm going to start working into the next stitch, which is row six. So now I'm going to be doing something where I stagger my increases. This is something that I explained in my last, or second from last video. My last one was the fall, guys. Before that, I explained stacked versus staggering your increases. When you 
stack your increases, you basically keep increasing in a line all the way up because your increases end up on top of one another. Whereas, and the way that you do that is a single crochet one, increase. The next round, single crochet two, increase. Single crochet three, increase. And they all line up and it turns into a hexagon. I don't necessarily want that for my amigurumi avocados. What I am going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I did for my next round in my staggering video. So what I did here, in order to get from 18, I single crocheted one increased. In how to get it from 18 to 24, usually you would single crochet two and increase. Instead, we're going to split that, where basically we single crochet one, increase single crochet one. That way it offsets that increase and it makes it so it doesn't all stagger up and it makes a more round shape. I hope that makes sense. So for round six, we are going to single crochet one, increase, and single crochet one. The entire, as I split my yarn every time, the entire way around. So as you can see here, single crochet one, that's an increased stitch because you can see the two together. Single crochet one. We're going to do that the entire way around. So single crochet one and increase. Single crochet one. And you can see there's still two stitches between each increase. It's just offsetting that increase every time. Single crochet one. Increase. That's a really loud truck. All right, single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, single crochet one. I feel like my cats have laid in my Vanna's Choice basket because I keep finding fur just everywhere when I'm working with it, even after I've cleaned everything and I think I've gotten everything. It's insidious. And this is an increase. Single crochet one. And we have one more single crochet one. Increase this stitch. And single crochet one. So now you can see where this is the seed that's popping up and we're going outward from there. Everywhere. All right. So next up, I'm going to do one more round before I tie off my honey yarn and kind of set that aside. You can just tie it off and chop it off. I prefer to go around one more round and then I will do that. So next up, in order to go from 24 to 30, we are going to single crochet three. So one, two, three, and then we're going to increase. And you can see where that offset's already happening. This is an increase. There we go because our increase from the previous round is over here, but our increase that we just did is right there. I hope that makes sense. At offsetting, it makes for a more round amigurumi and makes it look a little less hexagonal and you notice lines less. So that's useful. And this is three. And then you go into the fourth stitch, try to unsplit your yarn. There you go. And four and five, you increase it. One, two, three, four, five, four, five is the increase. One, two, three, four, increase. Nope, don't split. I'm gonna fix that because I don't want it to look raggedy. Where's my last increase? One, two, three, four. Come on, there we go. And increase. One, two, three, four. Increase. And we have one more increase to do. One, One, two, three, and increase. That was our last 
Increase four row seven. I think I'm on row seven. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, we were on row we were on row seven. Now we're on row eight. And for row eight, we're gonna do the exact same thing where we stagger our stitches, essentially. Actually, first, I'm gonna take my tail and I'm gonna move it up here so that it is out of the way. And I can keep track of where I am and not just kind of eyeball it that way. I'm also going to take my tails for what my add-on yarn was and for my last of the honey. And I'm going to double knot that really tight. Really tightly. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to cut those tails. I like to tie it first and then cut it because otherwise you waste yarn. Just chopping off your honey yarn and you don't want to waste yarn when there's yarn shortages. All right, so those are tucked away. I don't have to worry about those anymore because they will be on the inside. And now I have my tail out of the way over here. And usually when you want to increase from 30 to 36, you would single crochet four and increase on the fifth stitch. Instead, we are going to do the exact same thing where we kind of split the increase down the center of those four. So we just single crochet two because you split the four into half, one, two, and then you increase, and then you go one, two. Not split your yarn. It is splitting hard. I need to get done with this yarn because it's just splitting and I'm not happy with it. There we go. So one, two, increase, one, two. One, two, increase, one, two, one, two, increase, one, two. It's a splitting like crazy. One, two, increase, one, two, One, two, increase. One, two, and we have one more increase. One, two. This is splitting like crazy everywhere. I'm not a fan. Increase. Is everybody else getting yarn shortages? Because I feel like I'm getting yarn shortages everywhere. I'm from Maine, so I don't know if it's just specific to Maine or I'm just unlucky in that I live fairly rurally, so I don't know what is going on, but I'm not a fan. Let me fix that because I split that again and it's just splitting everywhere. There we go. There we go. So now I'm going to take my tail and move it along. And here is where things get a little funky. This is the last that we're going to be doing working in the round. We've gone around and around and we've basically done this part here. And now we're going to go back and forth and start working in the flat to create this upward shape right here. We are now on row, what I'm considering row nine. I'm working these in the flat and that is gonna be through both loops. Because I'm working in the flat, I wanna work through both loops to give it a bit more strength. It's a bit stronger with the flat piece. When it's working in the round, it's fine. I end up picking up those back rows a lot of times, so that's why I do that. But we're going to go across for row nine, the first 11, there we go. That was what it is, not for row nine, the first 11 stitches. So that's two, three, four, going through both loops, five, six, six, trying not to split yarn, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. So now we are going to flip and the way that I do that for round 10 is I'm going to chain one so that I can turn my work like so. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to do 11 stitches again. We're going to go into the first one and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. We're going to chain once again and turn onto row eleven. That was nine, this is ten, we're making eleven. And the way that I start tapering it is I'm going to start decreasing every other round um, on two on both ends. So I'm going to skip the very first stitch right here and go into my second one. That's skipping and I am essentially decreasing one round. If you want to go through both loops, you can and just do an invisible decrease. I find that this is just as easy and, and I just don't have to deal with all the hassle. So two, I'm going to crochet all the way down to the last two stitches. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now there are two stitches left on the very end because we skipped our first and we're gonna skip our second from last and go into our last stitch and that will bring us down from 11 to nine stitches. We're going to chain one, flip and on row 12 we're going to go through all nine of those stitches just through the back and i'm going through both parts of the stitch again so one two three four five there we go unhook that five six seven eight nine chain turn to 13 and we're going to go from nine stitches down to seven stitches the exact same way that we did it for the previous round over there so we're going to skip the first stitch go into the second and single crochet one two three four five and six, and now we have two stitches left. We're going to skip the second from last and go into the last one. We're going to then chain, turn. We're working on row 13. I've been keeping track of it on the bottom. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six and seven chain turn and we're going to do our last decrease round don't worry about your side ridges they will not look that way for forever it's just the general base shape skip the first stitch go into the second one two three four and now we have two stitches left Right here and right here, we're going to skip the second and go into the last, just like the entire time around. And now we have this lovely little base. And if you get confused at any point in time, I have all these numbers counted down. I have all of it on a printable PDF. Again, that is going to be for free for the first week for my subscribers if you want to click the link down below. And what I wind up doing here is we're going to go down this ridge. This should take six single crochet. I like to go inside the holes on each big ridge and I like to go through the middle of each row right here. So I'll explain. We're gonna go inside this little hole right here. One, go inside the big hole, the next part, two. 
go inside the center of that stitch. Three, I'm sorry, my neighbors are vacuuming. Go inside the big hole again. Four, center, five, and then the big hole again, six. So now we have all of our loops that we had from before. We took, we had 36 for this big round thing. We took 11 of them and went across like this. So we should have 25 stitches left here to single crochet around. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get all 25 of those stitches and we're going to just pick them up and I'm gonna go through both the loops just to make them nice and strong. And we're just gonna single crochet around all 25 of those stitches. I'm probably just gonna do a little fast forward thing until I get to the very end of this row. Until we get back to the other side over here anyway. Okay, so this tail is pretty much useless here. We're gonna put this down here and I'm going to now go back up all of the same, I'm gonna do the exact same thing where I go up the sides of those stitches and I kind of round it out to make it look a bit more even. We're going to pick up and go one, two, go inside the side, three, go inside the hole, four, go inside here, five, and go inside here, six. We have six stitches. So essentially, you should have the five that you had, plus six, 11, plus the 25, so 36, plus another six, so 42 stitches should be what's happening actively on the outskirts of your amigurumi piece because we're gonna do the exact same thing for the back and you're gonna go around for the 42 stitches, essentially. So I'm gonna cut my tail. I'm gonna leave a decently long tail so that it can be a nice, you know, decently long tail. I'm actually just going to pull it through like so and I'm going to use that tail for sewing later. I'm going to sew the majority of it with the brown but I'm going to just do this. I'm going to get some eyes. I'm going to show you how I attach the eyes real quick and uh, the mouth won't be until after everything's sewn together so I know everything is perfect. Be right back while I go grab the eyes. All right so I found some safety eyes and what I like to do with the safety eyes is I like to place them where the bigger holes are but like kind of right on the side, not quite, not quite there. A little bit further in, there we go. That's just a hole that happens to be there. Come on, buddy. Might end up going in there because this is being difficult. There we go, there we go. So I'm gonna place one eye there. I like to put the eyes in first and get an idea, kind of get an idea of the, of the ah, it fell. Where did it even go? Oh, there it went. Found it. All right. So I'm going to let that lay there. We're going to put you in there. Try to make them equidistant from one another. The closer they are, they're kind of like more chibi they are. I don't know. Then I take my backings and I put those on as well. Just real quick. Super cute. Sometimes the backs are hard to put on depending on whether or not the backing actually went to that safety eye. So that is it for there. I'm actually gonna just tuck my tail inward right there inside his little seat belly. So that is the eyes for the front and the little shell. So this back part here is done separately. It is done the exact same way as the seat. I'm gonna put him over here, there we go, so we can show a side by side. All right, so basically with these side by side, I just did my increases up to 36 and I did not have the two rows where I went around with the honey. So I went from six to 12 to 18, immediately jumped into my 24, 30 and 36. And then I went around like I did with the rest of this. That's essentially what I did for the rest of my shell. And now I'm going to go around four times around and around and around. I put my new stitch marker where my top is right here. So where I stopped right here, I put my stitch marker right there. That's why there's an extra little string right there. And we're gonna go around four times for these 42 stitches. 
they line up with the 42 stitches that should be on your green part here. We're gonna go around four times and then I'm gonna show you how I attach these two together and sew it together using a mattress stitch. If you don't know what that is, I'll explain. But I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you how I do the mouth and then that's pretty much it. Your avocado is pretty much done. I'll go around four times and then I'll be right back. Oh, also we're gonna be going through the front loops only again, just for these four rounds. All right, be right back. All right, so now we are four rows across. I went through the front loop only just for these. You might find that if these are not cupping the way that you want, if they are a little too dreaded out, maybe go through both loops just around when you're turning the corner. That way it will look a little bit smoother I don't have that problem, but I know that sometimes people do. My cat just opened my door. I'm trying to find a darning needle so that I can show how to sew this. All right, I have a darning needle now. So what I do is I'm going to just sew with my brown. I have a nice long tail. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna match up these two ends. I know that they're kind of on opposite sides, but it's fine. It's okay and I'm going to kind of just tuck that behind and let it, actually, you know what, I'm not, I'm gonna kind of just let it exist there. I'm going to match up this corner to that corner. So I'm gonna go on the corner and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a mattress stitch. And a mattress stitch is when you go through the back loop to the front of your work across this way and then you do the same exact thing on the other side. So I'm going through from the back to the front, like so on this side. I'm going to do the same thing here where I go up, go across and go down. And I have a more in depth for uh, mattress stitch tutorial again, listed down below in the beginner playlist. So I'm gonna do six stitches with the mattress stitch and that's pretty loose. So what I like to do next is I'm gonna pull them tight not so, so hard that they end up ripping, but so that the stitches look a little bit more, well, better. I might wanna do that with every four stitches considering how difficult that was. So two, three, four, like so. I'm going to tug it and make it tight and that's gonna kinda make it all even across. And I just like doing that the entire time. So I'm gonna go through here, that back loop, like so, and then I'm going to go through here, through that, that, that loop, and this is actually fairly loose, so I'm going to go through the center of it, kind of like that. You could fasten off and it'll probably be easier, but I didn't make that decision for some reason. So I'm going to take my tail and kind of tuck it, and then I'm going to go into this piece right here. And then I'm going to go through here and I'm going to keep doing this the entire way around. I just cupped my corner. I'm going to tug that a little tighter and I'm going to kind of make sure that my tail is hidden like so. I can always take it and move it around if I need to. For now, I'm going to actually just kind of tuck it on the inside. It doesn't really super duper matter. I'm going to continue to do the mattress stitch until I get to about an inch right here, all the way across, and then I'm going to stuff, and I'll show you what that looks like once I get there. But for right now, we are just mattress stitching. Oh, I tangled it. Oh, I tangled that. For now, we are just going to do a mattress stitch all the way down until we only have about an inch gap, and that's when I stuff, and I'll show you how I do that. So, we're going to do that, and then I'll be right back. All right, so. This is mostly done. I'm just trying to get it so that it's stuffed how I want it to be stuffed. We have about five stitches on either side left, and I think this is going to be it. And then I'm just going to finish it off. I'm going to show you how I go about finishing off my little end. So now that I have it mostly stuffed, I'm going to go back and forth. And every single stitch, I'm going to kind of tighten it every single time just to make sure that it doesn't get any kind of weird. I am trying to not get the stuffing into my stitches, but you know, it's polyfill, it's gonna get everywhere. Tug that a little bit. We're gonna go there. We're going to go above the polyfill. There we go. We're gonna go up 
up here, there's one more stitch. Down here, we're gonna go up through here, tug all, all of those, make sure they're nice and tight. And then this is mostly done, so we're just gonna go back inside and stab it through the center. Yeah, I'm happy with that. There we go. These little edges are always hard because you always try to get it so that they're all going the same way and it's just difficult. So I'm gonna actually stab in where I came out and I'm gonna go out a little bit further just to, you know, make my tail nice and long. And then your amigurumi is done and you can add whatever kind of faces you want. I also like that no matter how hard I tried to make them uniform, all of them have different faces because their eye placement just got weird. Just saying, it got a little weird. It's okay. He's a little chubbier than the others, but if, as long as I keep kind of pulling on him, yeah, a little bit of polyfill. Oh, come on. Don't do that. There we go. We'll do that and call it good. There we go. I'm happy with that. All of their eyes are just a little bit different on every single one of these. So I made this one's mouth a little off-centered and that one centered. I think I'm just gonna center the mouth on this one as I keep pushing on his little body. And I think I'm gonna make a centered mouth where I just take my puffy paint and I make a nice, I'm gonna shake up the puffy paint first. I'm gonna do that off camera. There we go. It makes it so that it's a little less weird. Put that that way. There we go. I'm a little bit everywhere. A little too much caffeine. So we're going to center it between the two eyes, like so. And I'm going to just do those two stitches that are between there. And what I'm liking to do is try to make a nice thick line that's got a fluid motion to it. That came out terribly because of that one little piece of polyfill. Little buddy. Why are we doing this? All right, this is still wet, but I can salvage it. There we go. All right, let's salvage that. That little piece of polyfill kind of took me for, for a turn there. We're going to try to fix this by just kind of puffing it out. we're gonna puff it out there. Why is this piece of polyfill just being a bugger? There we go. You know what? I'm gonna call that good. It's a little wonky on the side, but I feel like I can probably cut that a little bit. I'm gonna flatten it. Really? Because of course it did. There we go. I'm going to let that dry, and then I'm going to cut that off and try to make it work. The more you mess with these things, the worse it tends to get, so there's that. But, you know, life happens, so. I'm gonna show my goofs and everything. So my recommendation would be to maybe take a lint roller to your amigurumi piece before you do your polyfill because that just completely messed up my little smile there. Uh, worst comes to worst, I can just wait for this to dry and I can cut it off and I can figure that out. I think I'm just gonna leave it because it is kind of cute and it does it with all the little faces. It didn't come out too, too horrible. Once it dries, I'm hoping maybe I can go over it again just to smooth it out. But generally, this is what I do to make my little avocado. They all came out really cute. I don't know why this one's... I think I stuffed this one more and a little less was stuffed over here. So it's a little more angular, a little less angular. I'm gonna put him over here. And I'm going to do my outro. I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. If you like these, again, the PDF is down below. It will be for free for the first week. And I'm pretty excited about being able to do that. So if you're interested in that, I think one of them is more stuffed than the other. And their angles are just off a little bit. 
but I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. This is my cute little avocado. I love avocados. So that's pretty much all there is to this pattern. If you're interested in a printable PDF, again, that will be down below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like and appease the YouTube algorithm. That really does help us out over here. We are just getting close to 33,000 subscribers, which is crazy. That's insane for me. So I, I'm so excited to be able to share my craft and my amigurumi with that many people and having that many people do recommendations and, and asking for specific patterns and wanting to see stuff. I love comments, so comment down below. I try to reply to as many people as I can. We have PayPal links, we have Patreon. So if you are interested in doing that, that could have been very, very bad. He did not lose any of his smile, so let's put him over here. Uh, no pressure if you're uh, interested in doing any of that. We actually have some pretty cool rewards over on Patreon, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested and you're able. I know today is a uh, crazy time in our life, 2020 and all, but pretty much that's all there is to it. All right, until next time, guys. Bye!